Hey everyone, how y'all doing? So today I thought I'd go over five knives out of my collection that I need to carry and use more. Um, I got this idea from Gideon Stuff. If you don't follow Gideon Stuff on YouTube, go check him out. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. Awesome channel. He does a lot of knife testing where he actually you know, uses his knives. He's funny. He's interesting. Um, great channel. Just go check him out if you haven't. Subscribe to his channel. I try to watch every one of his videos. But he just did a video on this. Showed five knives that he needs to carry and use more. And I thought, man, that's a great idea because I got a ton of knives. And so many of them I just don't carry or use anymore. And they're all good knives. I, I, I wanted them when I bought them. I bought all of them. And most of them I used a lot when I got them. But for whatever reason, you know, they got pushed to the side because I got something new, something fancier, different steel, whatever. It's the latest, greatest thing. And yeah, this guy kind of got pushed to the side. And what's funny though is before he even showed the first knife, I thought of one. And I'm like, I got one, I need to carry more. And that so happened to be the first knife that he showed. So try to get keep this short and sweet. I won't spend too much time on any of these, but the one that we both picked happened to be the Steel Wheel Modus. Now, the Modus was a hot knife when it first came out, especially the the base model, like the one he showed with the D2 steel, FR and scales. Um, this one was their premium model with M390 steel, G10 handles, made in Italy and I got a good deal on this I actually bought it used it was like brand new um, I got it for like half price when these when they were making these still when these were available they're like I don't know 150 160 bucks so yeah I got it for probably just just a little over half price when it was all said and done but what an awesome knife. I really like this. Um, I was going to get the, you know, the base model of the FR and handle and D2. And I came across this on eBay. And I ended up getting this one. Uh, awesome knife. I love that blade shape. Feels great in my hand. Um, the action on this thing is stupid. Stupid smooth. I mean... It just drops. All you gotta do is to kind of tilt that handle a little bit. The just glides shut. So ridiculous action on this thing. Blade centering is still dead. Even, you know, dead center. Um, but yeah, it has pretty nice G10 scales. Got FR and backspacer lanyard hole. Um, I like this a lot when I got it. The only thing I didn't, I didn't like was I still prefer deep carry pocket clips, and this is not deep carry, but that doesn't bother me now. Um, but I don't know why I quit carrying this, using it, because it's it's a pretty awesome knife. Like I said, you know, at the time, this was the best deal I had on a knife, and definitely the best action. Look at that, and it just rockets out. You can't fail it. But yeah, I have not carried this in probably two years. So this is one I definitely got to revisit, start using more. Awesome knife. Now, next one I actually carried last week. I decided I was going to carry it. And... 
If you watched my knives I carried for week three, this is on here. I kind of went over it, but it's a Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight. The Manix 2 Lightweight's an awesome knife. Um, again, it's a larger knife, but it's, it's lightweight, and it does not does not carry bad in the pocket. I mean... It takes up quite a bit of room. It's got a wire clip. I I personally like wire clips, but again, it's not a deep carry. Uh, though I'm sure I could probably get a lynch clip or another clip that I could put on there and be deep carry. Um, but like I said, that doesn't bother me so much now. I don't mind. I don't mind a little bit sticking out sometimes. That's nice to have something else, you know, enough of a knife to grab a hold to instead of fishing into your pocket. But this is your base model, Manix 2, made in USA, Golden Colorado, CTS BD1N Steel. I, I have no issues with it. My pair of three has the same steel. Holds up good for me. Holds an edge good enough for me. It's easy It's easy enough to sharpen. Um, but when I do get this out, it's like, man, I love it. I love the way it feels in hand. It's kind of square and boxy, but you don't feel it. Ergos are excellent. That forward finger choil. And it's very similar to a my native five lightweight that I absolutely love. It's probably my favorite Spyderco I have. But yeah, I don't know. I carried this a ton when I first got it. Used the crap out of it. It's held up good. I I'm a little afraid of the tip, but I never broke it. Um it's got the ball lock on it. It's never been real drop shutty as you can see. You have to kind of flick it. But boy, just the Argos on this thing is so excellent. And it slices. This thing is a cardboard killer. Probably, you know, when I have a lot of cardboard to go through and I just want to get it done, that's when I grab this, whack it up, and throw it in the can for recycling. But yeah, CTS BD1 and steel. The FRN handles. And these are the translucent blue ones, which I kind of don't like anymore. I thought they were cool and cool when I first got it, because you could actually kind of like see the inside. But yeah, I just I got other spider codes. I guess it kind of took its place. But when I get it out and I use it. Oh, I love it. So this is definitely one I need to carry and use a lot more. Um, next one made quite a stir when it came out. You know, it's like $35. And I got the silver one. I wanted the black stone wash one. But again, another awesome knife. It's the Rake P8. One and this is the stainless <clears throat> stone wash one. Um, nice knife, you know, stainless steel handle, stainless steel frame lock. Action on this thing is great, also. Got a flipper tab and thumb studs. Girder goes 14C 28 inch steel, awesome blade shape. Nice chipping, comfortable in hand. You know, it's got a little bit of weight to it being stainless steel frame lock. Um, I like the blue accents, the blue thumb studs, the blue pivot collar, the blue deep carry pocket clip. Um, the only thing with pocket clip is it's got button head screws that stick up. Um, but that's it. This is one I carried a lot. And used it a lot. Centering's off just a touch now. 
not bad though, but $35, you know, especially at the, well, especially nowadays, right? Prices going up, but $35, 14C, 28 in steel, solid, solid knife. It does run on bearings. Um, yeah, this is another one. I, I see it, I grab it, I flip it open, I close it, and I think, man, I like that. I should carry it. Well, then I put it down, I grab, grab my Benchmade 940 or my Nader 5 or, or something. But definitely another one I need to carry and use more. The next one, man, I really wanted this when it first came out. Wasn't fast enough. They were sold out everywhere. And then they came out with a new color scheme. I'm like, I gotta have that. Then it was sold out when I went to get it. I finally got one. And I haven't carried it that much. I carried it a fair amount when I first got it. And yeah, I don't I don't know why I don't carry these knives. Um that would be the Kershaw bare knuckle. What an awesome just an awesome design. I like the blade shape. I liked everything about it when it came out. That's why I wanted it. Um, USA made Kershaw. I don't know what these things run now. 80 bucks, 86 bucks, something, something like that. Um, great action. It's a flipper. Kershaw does a nice stone wash finish. I like that. Green and dice, aluminum scales. I like that. I like the feel of them. They're done nice. Um, rides on Kershaw's KVT, I think, what the bearings are called. Very smooth. Um, there's sub frame lock, which can cause issues. Frame locks. Can cause issues with me because I get my fat fingers onto the lock bar. Put you put a little pressure on any of them, and they don't want to open. And this is no exception. It doesn't take too much pressure to really lock it up. So you gotta make sure. I gotta make sure my fingers are, are not on there. Then it opens excellent. Um, awesome. Again, it's a larger knife. Which I like larger knives now. Um, good ergos, feels good in hand. Nice flat grind, pretty slicey. Got this, I don't know what they call it, kind of suspended backspacer. Um, the only thing about this one is the pocket clip. It's a short pocket clip. It, kind of sits into this cutout so the pocket clip does stick up but it sits down in this recess and it is a strong heavy duty clip I mean as so tight that yeah this is a pain in the butt sometimes get in and out of pocket you about push your pants down and trying to get it in Pull your pants up your armpits, try and get it out sometimes, depending on what kind of pants you have on. But, you know, I can work around that. I don't know why I don't carry it. It's not heavy, you know, fairly lightweight. It's aluminum with a stainless um, subframe lock. But, yeah, this is one I got to get out use and beat up a little bit make it look cool but yeah that's another one and like i said this is one took me a long time to get my hands on one whenever i thought about it and i went to check them out you know buy one they're sold out but i do dig the green and black i think it looks good um the next one, next two actually, again, when they came out, 
they're like the budget knife to have. They kind of revolutionized EDC knives. And first one I got of the two, and they're both Ontario Rats. I got the Model 2. I got the small one with a D2 steel. Um, this was my EDC knife for quite a while. Carried this all the time. Used the crap out of it. Um, I don't know what they run now. D2 ones are probably just under 40 bucks or right around 40 bucks. Made in Taiwan. Um, awesome little EDC knife. It's got, just had some dirt on there. I thought, but man, there's chips in that. But there's not. Um, nice little EDC, EDC knife. I just got all five fingers. My pinky's like half off. You can choke up a little bit, do fine work. And yeah. Boy, I beat the crap out of this knife. I've used it enough that the lockups actually moved over about halfway. It used to be probably 25%. Now it's halfway. Still no blade play. Um, never been a drop shutty type of knife. But this made an awesome little work knife, EDC knife. But again, no, not deep carry. I wish it was deep carry. I've always been going to buy a deep carry clip for, especially this one. Um, but yeah, just don't carry it. But I like this enough. I'm like, man, I got to get the Model 1, the big one. And again, I'd go get one. They're out of stock. They had the OS 8. I wanted the D2. Um, the colors I wanted were always out of stock because they come in different color scales. Um, so I finally just said, I'll get, I'm going to get this one. So I got this one with these tan scales, which at first I'm like, I'll just dye them black or something. I kind of like. I kind of like this color, kind of, kind of grew on me, but yeah, holy cow, what a knife. I did, did not realize how much bigger this one was. Um, <clears throat> and it's kind of heavy because it has full stainless steel liners. They're not milled out, neither one of them, but I, I seen, I've seen so many size comparisons. You know, these were a standard size comparison knife forever. Put put the rat one on top, the rat two on bottom, and man, I just didn't I didn't realize it was that much bigger. Which I like the size. I really do. Comfortable in hand, no hot spots, you can really choke up on it. Um both of these have FR or nylon scales, which they're nice. I mean, you get a non-knife person, you get the average Joe, and you show one with G10 and this one, they'll think it's the same thing. The average person's not even going to be able to tell the difference, so... And I have no problem with FRN, nylon, or, you know, anything personally. But, man, what a bruiser the Rat Model 1 is. This is D2. I should have just gotten the OS 8 one and got a color. But, um, D2 on this one has held up really excellent for, for me. Um. Sharpened it a couple of times, but that's because I used the crap out of it. I heard a lot of people say Ontario, the D2 on the rats, is soft compared to some D2s. Um, I didn't find that to be the case on this one. And this one, I just have not used enough to even make a 
determination on it. Um, again, one I always wanted. I wanted for a long time, finally got it. Then I don't use it. I don't carry it. And I like it. It's an awesome knife. So this is another one I need to use and you know carry and use more. Awesome. Man, that thing just flies right out. I'm not sure um, bronze washers, the nut bearings, they're on phosphorus bronze washers, which is good for dirty work. Um, but yeah, I guess that would do it for this video. That's five. Count these as one. Um, five knives that I like. They're good knives. I just don't carry them. I don't know why. But I'm going to start. So, those are the five for this video. I'm telling you, I can do at least one more, if not two more, of these videos on other knives. But I guess that'll do it. Do the usual like, comment, subscribe if you haven't. And until next video, bye.